Ooh, some dream collabs that are left. I want to work with King Cruel, Tyler the Creator. I want to work with Tori Omoy. I want to work with Travis Scott, Young Thug. Yo, what it do? It's Ski Master Slump God, and you rocking with Lyrical Lemonade. Yeah, bitch. We're going through like a lot of, uh, I guess you could say my corner people have been, been fucking up lately, so management problems and shit like that. Um, just going through a lot of shit like that, just going through the process of figuring out what it is to be an artist. Uh, like, yeah, figuring out, like, because at first, when you first come in, it's all about, like, like the glam and the glitz and shit. And then I started taking a step back and then after a while, the glam and glitz get old and then it's like, nigga, it get down to it. It's like, my business need to be serious and everybody need to be serious around me. You know what I mean? And it's not, that's just not what I've seen. So I've been going through like, I guess self-empowerment, trying to empower my, my brain, going through shit, thinking, planning, plotting, stupid shit, but real shit. I think the reason that people like Timberland, um, Manny Fresh, fucking Missy Elliott, people like that fuck with me, like Busta, uh, Twista, they all fuck with me like on a personal level. I don't know. I think I, I'm just like a really adaptable, like I, like I could really like hit a platform of the youth and actually not feel like this shit ass to the old heads. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I actually say something that somebody like that old heads kid relate, like not relate to, but like at least vibe to, you know what I mean? Like, at least I'm saying some shit in my shit. Like I know that for a fact that they can feel it. I make music that you can feel that you can't like deny, you know what I mean? So I don't know why they don't, I can see why they don't fuck with the younger, like the other people from like this generation because I guess the type of image that they put that they be pushing for themselves, a lot of younger, a lot of people in this generation right now, are their images, like their music, and the, their music and their numbers are good, but like their image is really, really like cloudy and sketchy. So I guess that's one thing. Timbaland got the sauce already. That's what it was. Like really, like that was one of the big things. Timbaland has the sauce already. Timbaland, like old beats from Timbaland. I'm talking about Timbaland working with uh, Justin Timberlake. I love shit like that. Like. uh all of the work he did with Aaliyah, everything, fucking, um, it, it was just Timbaland, like, old Timbaland beats always caught my eye for some reason, like, old beats, like, with a catchy rhythm. I don't know who else that I could best put it on other than Timbaland. There's just something about the way his beats, like, knock and, like, how it is. It's not, like, new generation, but it still can be. Um, I took, uh, the Catch Me Outside beat. I took that beat where, um, sampled it from Missy Elliott, and then we do, like, we put a, a new generation feel to it, I guess you could say. We added uh, 808s, a lot of 808s and hard 808s, like what we are used to, like thumps and shit like that. So it would make it more adaptable to like us. And then after that, like everything else was just like, that. Was, everything else was just like flow with the wind. Like it's, it's really just something with like, I don't know, energy, I guess like, like the way like it came about was just so like nonchalantly fire. Basically, I feel like anybody who's made it so far has had focused on music or their art. Whatever they're doing in their art, they focused on it 100% at that time. Like there was a time that they focused on it 100%, not half school, not half music. Like even if you're going through rough shit and you have to go through the rough shit to figure out your art 100%, that's what you have to go through, you know what I mean? So it's just like, uh, dedication, like 100% dedication, basically. You know what I mean? I guess that's what it was for me because I uh, basically was like, I don't know, it took, I was, me and X was like, at the time me and X met, we weren't homeless, but we were basically homeless. Like we were just like nomads, like children of not like, that was just not with family usually or parents or anything like that. So. It was like we built it, we seen it as us together building something that we never got. We're not good at things like, I don't know, I never see myself good at shit other than like music or I never tried to. I guess it just puts your mind to something that you see where, how it goes. Yeah, it's easier said than done though. Duh, Fortnite. 
<laughs> no cap. Um, some things that make me happy. No lie. Fortnite. Food. Oh my god. Yes. Food. My dog. Music. Definitely. Um. I guess the whole the whole aspect of being an artist, like keeping up with being an artist, keeping up with myself, is just fun. It's interesting. It's a fucking wild roller coaster ride. That shit makes me happy. So it's like I never like. And it's like I can't fake the funk, so it's like I have fun just being me. And like, it's not hard because it's like all I gotta do is just be me. You know what I mean? Even as an artist, I can't lose sauce because it's just people like me, and it's not hard to be just me. You know what I mean? Yeah, no cap. I'm here for it. And I'm the best Fortnite rapper player. I'm here for it. I want all the smoke. <laughs> no cap. All right, like, all right, first getting into, like, diversity, like, putting in a different spin on my music was very difficult. That was another thing that I was, like, really working on as, like, an artist by myself for a while. It's hard to, like, it's experiment with something when so many people are used to one thing from you already. So, like, when I started, like, melodizing and stuff like that, it's a different sound for people. I felt like people needed to hear that from me because to be a good artist, you need to like, or to be a, the best artist, I feel like you need to have all varieties. Like you need every variety, you need to master your, like your, your craft, you know what I mean? So I feel like I needed to go in a different direction. I showed people I could rap now. Let me show them that I can actually make a song. Yeah. Other than that though, I got hella songs coming like that. Like um, definitely more, way more in the works, especially more with Danny Towers. Um, yeah, just expect a lot more songs like that. But I felt like the tape that I just dropped was mediocre in a, in a sense of, not the songs, but I, I guess you could say the songs. Like, the, they took, like, the the management, that the problem, the problems that I have with the management and the samples, but it's a big explanation and shit I wouldn't rather discuss fucking. Basically, they took Nationwide off of it, they switched to Run Beat, and then they, um, what else is on it? What else? What else? What else was all fucked up off of it? They took one more song off of it I can't think of right now. And, oh yeah, Boy Meets World. <clears throat> Boy Meets World wasn't on it either. So, and then basically they just, it just dropped like horribly. Like not everything that I was expecting or promised or was told that was happening this way really wasn't like that. You know what I mean? And I, like I'm a young black artist and I guess like I didn't really see the vulnerability in that. I thought just everybody was my friend, these type shit. But it's like, I get you just gotta watch out for labels, really. Like the niggas in business suits is the real thieves and robbers. Like that's the real thieves. So you just gotta be careful. So I feel like the job I just did was mediocre, and everything I will do now, definitely. At least I learned my, I learned from it. You feel me? So now it can never happen again. I still did my best out of what it, what happened, the situation. I mean, it was a tense moment. Uh, seeing X again. No, I haven't seen X when me and X performed during Rolling Loud. I haven't seen X or spoken to X since other times of us not being on good terms. So seeing him, seeing him was funny to me. Um, he came, came kind of angry. Got <laughs> we got on stage. He came kind of angry. He wasn't trying to really like talk. I was like, all right, whatever. He still came. You feel me? Then we got on stage. We performed together. Um, it was great though. Let me tell you that. Like our energy was that's not, that's something that I can never deny. Or like if we ever make music again together, still because it's still a question. Like we still don't know if we're still gonna like be around each other like we used to be, um, or make music. But if we do end up doing that shit, that shit's gonna be viral and very crazy and hard. There's the energy that me and that nigga um create is undeniable, definitely. One thing I'm really proud of myself for is definitely working with Timberland and Busta. Those were my idols. It's like I almost cried when I met both of them. Those are my def those are my idols from like childhood memories and growing up and still to this day. So like working with Timberland and Busta, still th those had to be my happiest moments throughout my career so far. Had to, definitely. And Timberland and Busta is so cool, bro. Like B Timberland smokes weed. I was in the studio with Timberland. This nigga Timberland. Grabbed like a, he went on Google, um, YouTube, grabbed a uh, a sound from an airplane flying, 
sampled that shit, put it in a beat, made it in less than 30 minutes. And they get smoking big ass joints with glass filters, falling asleep in the studio. That shit was hilarious. And then, <laughs> yeah, I fuck with Timberland. And um, Busta, that nigga Busta lit, that nigga Busta Jamaican too. So it's like, we be on the same vibe. He drink Hennessy, that's my vibe. And he smoke cigarettes, life short. So, <laughs> you date, yeah. Ooh, some dream collabs that are left. I want to work with King Cruel, Tyler the Creator. I want to work with Tori Omoy. I want to work with Travis Scott, Young Thug. Um, I want to work with um, Death Grips. That would be fire. Uh, Marilyn Manson, that would be a fucking lit one. Um, maybe some bands. Um, there would be some artists that I would say like, I would want to work with, but I know that it's still maybe in the works and we've definitely talked about like working together like Uzi, fucking um, Thug. I just recently talked to Thug. That's crazy. Yeah, right. Fuck with Thug. Shout out to Thug. Um, about to work with Gunna. Fuck with Gunna. I think it's snapping. Who else? Um, I want to work with Erica Badu. <laughs> no cap. Uh, I'll say that. Other than that, yeah, I want a song with Rihanna. I'll take that too. I'll throw that in there. Beyonce also. I guess some downsides to being an artist, a successful like like and no one sucks is like like going out is not the same anymore. So it's like everything's different. Everything's different, bro. <laughs> everything's different. Like Nothing is the same, so you just gotta like, and then it's like, it's just a jump into different. So it's just like, damn, what the fuck going on? So it's like, you go out, what the fuck, this is you? You can't, like, if you're in a rush, then you gotta decide whether to be an asshole or not, to take a picture or not. You gotta, it's like a lot of like decisions. <laughs> it's a lot of fucking decisions. Like, it's um, privacy, I guess. That's one bad thing about it, it's just your privacy. like. Anything that you do, it's just, even if you really like, it's something that, I don't know how to explain it. Personal shit is not personal shit no more. That's the one bad thing I can say about it. Um, it makes your friends, it makes some people around you change. That's one thing I can say, definitely. Um, good things about it though, it helps you support you and the people around you. Like, even if the people did change on you, the people that you're still trying to take care of. Like, it's for the bigger picture. Um, another good thing about it is seeing, like, um, if you're an artist, the good thing about it is, see, like, creating and then creating how you would want to create, which is, like, you get the freedom of, like, really, like, creating every, like, how you would really want to create in the studio you would want to or like, the artist that you would really want to work with, you know what I mean? Like, that's a beautiful sight. Like, when I worked with ASAP Ferg, that shit was definitely one of the funnest or like happiest times too. That shit was fire. And the song came out good as fuck. That was fire. It's like the experience, just the scene you create with an artist that you never thought you would with before. Like, I never thought I would work with ASAP Ferg. I used to listen to ASAP Ferg a whole bunch, like Kiss It Pink. I remember listening, yeah, I remember we used to be stuck on that shit. Like, shit, long live ASAP. I used to be stuck on that shit. I remember those times. And then in between? In between, to get that balance, yeah, you really gotta keep a balance. Like, uh, um, what do they call it? I forgot what they call it when you have to, um, when you're doing a certain thing, but you have to like give yourself, uh, fuck, may not maintain, um, basically a balance, like a balance in life. Like you, you're doing something, but you have to make sure that you stay on point. Like me, I live a wild life, so I like I turn up wildly, smoke, drugs, lit life. Then I gotta make sure I like go home, stay there for a while, work out, eat good, make myself feel good about myself again so I can go feel like shit again. <laughs> and that's the balance. Yeah. The SoundCloud, like, uh, the SoundCloud era is really weird and it's really cool at the same time because it's like everybody that came up through the SoundCloud era was all linked up somehow. Like, it's weirdly. Um, being from Florida, it was 
a different time because everybody, I'm not going to lie, and it's still, it's still happening. Atlanta is still, like, one of the hottest, like, music states. And then, like, Florida was never really getting any, like, attention. Like, New York always got attention. Like, if you really think about it, like, who always usually get big attention? Atlanta, New York, Cali. And that's, like, many, what is, the main big ones. You feel me? So then, st- like, it was a good time for Florida where we all started just, like, popping out. Started doing good. I'm pretty sure none of us expected to do this good. Lil Pump, Smoke Perp, X. I'm pretty sure none of us expected to get this big, but it's a beautiful sight. No cap. I definitely seen all of us come from a struggle, t- struggling times. You feel me? So it's definitely a beautiful sight. It's like a beautiful sight. I'm, I, I can see it in their eyes too when they, when we all see each other. Like we're just like damn. Like then we really realize like what the fuck. Like how long we knew each other and how much, how long we've been doing this and how big we got during doing this shit. It's like damn. It's crazy. Ha ha. A ski mask show. It's pandemonium. That's just ridiculous. Dog, I want to start wild, doing way more wild shit in my shows, like bringing like weird ass people in costumes, just standing there, some Lady Gaga ass costume or some shit. Like I remember one show I hung upside down, like and that shit was lit as fuck. It was in um, New York, it was at Webster Hall. I hung upside down in the middle of the show. That shit's lit. Basically, my shows is like a little bit of everything, like a little bit of y'all chill, listen to this, nod your head, a little bit of nigga, fuck some shit up, and if you're not fucking shit up, go in the back. Uh, yeah, that's the best way to explain it. Come to a ski match, show. I guess my definition of success. Success, I guess, would be, would come from within. Not from things that you do, but a feeling of, because a homeless person can be successful to themselves. Well, you mean like successful to yourself or in general? Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah, a homeless person could be successful. You, you feel me? Like he could feel successful to himself. He could feel like he did the best he did that day. I feel like it's just a a within feeling. So, like, do you feel like it's you know when you should feel successful about yourself? So it's like, yeah, I did enough. I feel good about myself. Like, oh yeah, I did enough work. I could do this. You know what I mean? Success is a feeling. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a feeling because. So why I would say for me especially is because I'm successful and I still be in my moods where I be in my head where I be depressed as fuck, feel like I ain't shit, feel like I ain't do shit enough yet, feel like I ain't do enough yet, still feel like I got to do a whole bunch more. Yet. So it's definitely just a feeling, you feel me? Like success is a feeling because I forget that I'm successful sometimes. Like I go outside and I be forgetting like, yo, yeah, I'm straight. Like I don't even be thinking about it that much. So it's definitely just a feeling, you know what I mean? That everybody would get used to. Or we go through shit like every time. Like the more I, the more successful I feel, or I get deeper into the game, the more I understand Britney Spears' fucking breakdown in 2000s, whatever it is. Yeah, I know. I kind of feel like I know why she she started tripping the fuck out <laughs> because this shit is ridiculous. Dog. Yeah, no cap. Shave my head too. It was something I grew up like listening to because um, I lived in the area. I live in Deep Side, like Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So where it's like near the Swap Shop and Martin Luther King Drive Street and shit. So it's like coming from there, it's just like people expect you to be one certain way. Like they expect you to be hood, in a sense, I guess you could say, whatever that uh, classification is. Fucking, I guess I just. I didn't want to strive to be different, but I just w- wanted to strive to just like, you feel me, like not be categorized. So I, like I started listening to shit like that, like rock and getting into shit like that. And also listening to shit like um, old school shit and then also listening to other stuff. So I guess that's where my, like why I can hit so many levels of people. It's because I like to, I, I like I listen to, I don't like to categorize anything, you know what I mean? And then what you said was like unknowingly like blending like genres. That's very true. That's very true. Like I know, I, like I just have to sit back and think of how much me and X actually did for like a lot of the culture. And then I didn't really realize that like just in general, you feel me? Not if people even, not even meaning like people trying to like copy it or getting the style from us. Just in general of how much we did and how much inspired inspiration we got gave to other people throughout our careers. You know what I mean? To do different things. Definitely. 
Revenge tour was ridiculous, nigga. All right, revenge tour. There's a girl named. There, all right. <clears throat> so X has a song called Butthole Girl. And it's coming from Revenge Tour. Revenge Tour, this is a show. There was one day we went on a show. I don't remember what. what I think it was Arizona. And I come downstairs from performing. And then there's a line in the bathroom. And, the, and this is with like all gang. So I'm looking at these niggas like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Like, y'all all waiting for the bathroom? When they get the door open, this girl's on her knees sucking everybody, fam. I'm talking about niggas going in back to back. I'm like, y'all niggas is nasty. The show just ended. Y'all niggas sweaty. She gross. <laughs> fucking um after that this nigga x decides to bring her on the tour bus as in butthole girl that's what we called her butthole girl because she was just pleasure niggas <laughs> like that ass that's what she was on the tour for that's the job that <laughs> she got butthole girl but that's not why we call her butthole girl so one day um this nigga x like having a lot of girls in the room and niggas i won't be there i don't know what they be doing but um i heard but it was true though. This nigga, our security, our security fucked this girl in the ass in front of these niggas, dog. In front of some girl, like dead ass, son. But whole girl. No cap. Ah, the 27 Club. All right. The 27 Club is, um, I guess. I guess it's to say that, like, I really personally, I don't want to be growing old and, like, I don't know, see my friends grow old and die out on me, and like, I don't know, I feel like I wanna live, I'm, cause I feel like I know there's something after this, you feel me, and I feel like that's the best thing that, I feel like that's what, even though people are scared of death, I feel like that's what's, that's the, that's what is the best thing of what we're waiting for is after death, you feel me, so, I mean, I wouldn't mind going at 27, I feel like I know I'll live my best life, and I feel like I know what, ha I feel like I know there's something after, you know what I mean? I got my faith. <laughs> Ski Master's not God in 10 years. Hopefully has retired, done some movies. Um, Columbia, sipping lean margaritas with your auntie. <laughs> no cap. I'm trying to be retired as fuck in like two years, my nigga. <laughs> no cap. I'm trying to be uh, my childish getting beat though. I'm trying to start making movies. I'll get all these tats removed, brother. This rap shit ain't where it's at, now I'm playing. Making music is where it's at. Being a rapper, is being in a rap game is ass. It's horrible. But hey, stay in school. <laughs>